right, wonderful. And thank you, everybody. And I put the bio in there while we had a little bit of delay just to give you all something to read. But Paulo is had a career, a life, a legacy in the fitness industry. This has been something he's been able to touch thousands of lives with his experience, not only physically through his facilities and clubs, but also globally as being the author of the book, Stay Strong and Live Long, which he's going to really break down for us, which is his practical guide to functional aging training. This book is about the importance of exercise to support the things that we need, love, and what we want to do for the rest of our lives. Paulo's philosophy is fitness is not about the perfect body or trying to bring back who you were back in the day. Instead, fitness can meet you where you are today and enrich the rest of your lives. So thank you so much, Paulo, for sharing the gift of your time and for each and every one of you in attendance as you're here dedicated to learning and to impacting not only your joy and happiness by serving others, but by also helping people get the exercise that they need. So thank you, Paulo. I really appreciate you being here and sharing your wisdom with us today. Well, thank you, JR, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, you know, all the participants, the attendees that uh, is taking the time to, to see me here. And uh, thank, thank you, Dan and Cody, for, for the invitation. I'm very excited and I'm very honored to uh, share my passion. You know, I've been doing this since the first day I stepped into college to get a sports science degree. And I've been doing one-on-one -on -one personal training since then. So it's really, it's really an honor and, a, and, a, and a, uh, exciting to be here and, and share that. So um, before I go any further with the presentation, I just wanna say I'm, I'm the founder and owner of Fit Factor Personal Training here in beautiful Fort Lauderdale. It's hot today, and, um, but we will survive that. Um, and I've been, I've been at Fit Factor. I opened Fit Factor in 2001, just about one year after I moved here. But, uh, but I want to start my presentation with, with Gilda's story. So this is Gilda and Melinda. Uh, I've known them for a long time. Melinda is married to Elliot. Elliot is an owner of a restaurant chain in Fort Lauderdale. And I've trained them on and off for about 18 years. I've trained Melinda when she was pregnant with her first daughter. She's about 13 years old, the daughter now. Um, and through Melinda, I met Gilda in 2011. And Gilda's great, I love her. She's just about curious of, about everything. She Googles anything, she loves anatomy, she loves to understand what she's doing when it comes to exercise. So, um, and I had a really good personal relationship with Gilda because she reminded me a lot of my mom. Um, they're about the same age. Melinda and I are about the same age. Um, so Gilda has a great testimonial in my book. She says, in, among other things that she said, that exercise did not make her a superwoman, but it did take her across the world in traveling. So Gilda would, once a year prior to COVID, uh, get herself into um, um, a trip across the world, somewhere around the world, and by herself would join and, and, and have a great time. Uh, then COVID hit, COVID hit, and, and all those personal connections were lost. Um, she stopped training, we tried virtual, it, it didn't really work out. She wasn't comfortable, I wasn't comfortable training her online. And um, so she, you know, we, we lost a little bit of touch, you know, we stayed, you know, via text every once in a while. And in the middle of the COVID, I got a phone call from Melinda said, hey, what's the situation at Fit Factor? Can my mom come back and work out with you? And I said, of course, you know, we're keeping the six feet you know, distance and we're wearing masks and we're doing everything we need to do. So she came back and a couple of weeks later when she was training with me here, she tripped and fell. And I knew it right away, that wasn't right. It wasn't, it was serious. So in 30 years of, my career as a personal trainer. I never had anything like that. Never hurt a client, never had anything pass out on me. So it, it broke my heart. We called 911. She had a broken femur, nasty femur, whole nine yards, needed surgery, pins, rod. And, um, and it really, truly broke my heart. I remember a, a meeting that I had with, uh, with then, then reaching the mastermind people 
and I told them what had and and, and and every time I would think about it, it would give me a, a knot in my stomach. But anyway, so she she went through the surgery. She did physical therapy. I stayed in touch with her, with her family. I made myself available for whatever they they could need. I went to visit her a few times, and she was strong. She was getting through. You know, it was you know she was complaining about the pain and discomfort, but she did she did go through the whole thing. So that's her new femur, um, a rod down the femur, pin, screws, and um, but the reason I talked to her about you guys is that she came back eventually. I got another phone call from her in April, and she said, "Paulo, I'm kind of done with my physical therapy, and I'm ready to start working out again." And that was a very happy day. So she came, and I recorded our first workout after she came back. So this is the some, some you know some of the stuff that Gilda was doing on her first day back, um, fully mobile, fully strong, and um, and I sent her a text message. I said I cannot tell you how happy I am to have you back uh, the day of you know that our first workout. And then she answered back, but I must tell you how happy I am to be back. Today was great. In the beginning, I was able to see her once a week. She was asking for a couple of times a week which I was able to, to fit her in eventually. Uh, she said exercise is a wonderful help, both physically and mentally. So like JR said, you know, we're, you know, our jobs is to help our clients, not only physically, but also, you know, emotionally and mentally. So um, good is great, she's back, she's strong, and, uh, and I'm very happy and excited to, to work with her again. So a little bit about me, about who I am after, you know, JR gave me this wonderful introduction. Um, like I said, I got a, a degree of, in sports science, a bachelor degree in sports science in Brazil. I'm originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil, hence the accent. So I hope you can understand me as I'm, as I'm speaking. That's me, my first job. Um, the guy in the middle there, hugging. So that was me and my team. And that was a great job. It was a, a health club where all the rich and famous would go, all the soccer uh, teams in Sao Paulo, all the soap opera stars. So it was, a, it was a really good job as a first year in college. And we were hired by the, the health club to be floor instructors. So floor instructor would mean that we would walk around the gym floor, helping the members, correcting them, you know, changing their programs, um, meeting with them, you know, if you meet, meet somebody and see that they're doing not, they're not doing something correct, we help them, we spot them. So we were just kind of the whole team walking around and, and, and being busy, looking busy for, for the owner, right? Um, and then we were also personal trainers. So the members could hire us um, to work as, as personal trainers. So to make it as a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer back then, you would really have to step up our game to show a little bit more than what they're already getting as, as a regular member. So I, I realized then back in 1991 there that, um, that delivering service, delivering excellence um, would make a difference in the one-on-one -on -one business. And I, I kept that philosophy until today, right? On the top right there, that's um, my beach people. Um, just quickly about them. We meet every Saturday at the beach for a, for a group workout. Uh, Tim Singer, that's the gentleman here on the blue shirt behind me. He's my very first client. He started working out with me when I first moved here in 2000. So he's been a client for 20 years. Um, he's my best friend, one of my best friends. Um, he's a realtor. So we, we bought the house right next door to him 20 years ago. Um, and he started training right then and never stopped. The couple in the back here is father and daughter. Father, I uh, feel is 73 years old. His daughter is 37. She's a breast cancer survivor. Um, the whole family works out at Fit Factor. Uh, Phil's wife is 72. She has MS and works out three times a week with us for the last four years. Uh, Susan Drynan, she's the one in the gray shirt here. Um, 55 years old, she's a rock. She's a mother of three that I've seen her kids growing up from six years old. I used to play with them on the Bozo ball and now they're all graduated from college. Um, so we really enjoyed that. Our, our clients become our friends and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, tennis is my second passion. You can see me and Juan. Juan is also 
one of my best friends is 57 years old, a brilliant neurosurgeon, one of the best in the country, and, uh, and also one of my clients for about 18 years. So one and I do, you know, by week, by monthly tennis trips around Florida, um, and we stay about a week and playing tennis and having a good time. And at the bottom is my team. They're awesome people. Now, the one on the left is my partner, Mike Johnston. Uh, he's watching this presentation here. He's 65 years old. We've been together for 27 and um, he's a prostate cancer survivor, believes in exercise, believes that exercise has helped his health tremendously. And then I have Remy there next to me. Um, and Remy is 58 years old. He is um, a machine. He's getting ready for a bodybuilding show in October. Um, Cesar is my little brother. He's about 42, 43 years old. He's been working with us for about five years. Luana just left. She was my intern. She graduated from University of Miami and took a job in Atlanta as an athletic trainer following her dream. So she's no longer with us, but we still get, we just had dinner with uh, her and her family last weekend. And then we have Derek here on the left, uh, on the right, 63 years old, boater. Um, these are the people that really make it happen here at Pitfactor and, and I own a lot of them. So um, enough about me, let's talk about my ob objectives of this presentation. So I just wanna share with you what I know uh, about the industry, you know, in, in what I learned in 30 years uh, in the one-on-one -on -one business. We're gonna talk about the importance of professionalism, you know, the importance of education, uh, credibility and trust. Um, I do wanna talk about our avatar client, where, what do they look like and uh, who are they? And we're gonna talk about how I make things happen here at Food Factor, our, our way of working. And then we'll have some time to do some Q and A. Hope that that's time to do all that. Cool. All right. So this is this is a slide that I think I have to go through it. I think everybody uh, has been in the industry. I wish you could see everybody to ask. You know who's in the industry for you know for less than five years. Who's in the industry for more than five years? Um, but that's something that I think I have to mention. You know, as a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, it's a relationship that that you have to like your client and your client has to like you and he, and he has to, to have, develop into a relationship. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work for longevity. So I think the way we look and the way we present ourselves to the population that we work with, with the baby boomers and the Gen X, the way we look makes a difference. So I think that we should always you know, be well-groomed, um, clean clothes, clean shoes, I think that is important because the way we look um, can provide our client or ourselves more confidence, um, more professionalism. And, um, and I think that starts to build a relationship with the client that, that, that it's based on, on perfection, on respect. I think that's important. So you can, have, you can have beard, you can have blue hair, but as long as you present yourself properly, right? I had a teacher in college that was always dressed so appropriately, so nicely, you know, and we're going to sports science where all the other teachers were wearing shorts or, or sweats and he would dress up. You know, and he said, just because we're in the fitness industry, it doesn't mean that we have to wear tank tops and spandex all the time. And I agree with that. Um, again, just a quick story and it's kind of a funny story. When I first opened Fit Factor, um, I had a phone call from a trainer that was, wanted to come here and meet me because he wanted to bring clients. He was new trainer in town and he, wanted, he was looking for a place to bring some clients. So I, you know, I, I agreed to meet him. So I can, you know, if you guys can see it here, my, my it's a storefront. So I saw this Jeep parking across the street and, uh, and the spare tire cover was a picture of him without any shirt, bodybuilding, big guy with the sunglasses, lower like that and cut off button jeans open. And, uh, and then he came out of the Jeep looking exactly like that. Spaghetti tank top, you know, cut off jeans. And he said, when he walked in, we shook hands and one of the first things out of his mouth and I'm gonna quote unquote what he said. And that's something that I will never forget. He said, I'm a straight man. I have a girlfriend, but I'm only gonna kick Tater 
to the gay clientele because I know I'm the cat's meow. So um, we shook hands again and, and, and of course that did not work out. But anyway, um, look your best, try to look professional. I think that's how we start a good relationship with a client. Be on time, there's nothing less professional than being late for your appointments, right? So wherever you're working at your home or at a facility or your facility or somebody else's, you know, plan your travel time. Um, so you're always about five to 10 minutes before your client's session starts. So you're there to greet your client, you're there to prepare your session, which is the next thing, right? So you don't have to rush. So again, there's nothing less prepared than getting to an appointment and not be prepared for your client, not be prepared for your session. Uh, having to pull out things out of your head at the last minute because the clients notice that. Um, our clients notice that. You know, I, and I know that in the, in the past, when I had trainers that wouldn't be prepared, you know, they would look like and make comments to me, how you always prepared and you know, it's not. So that kind of relationship, you know, again, you have to, you have to present professionalism to your, to your client, to your, to your community as much as you can. So always be prepared for your, for your session. Uh, don't cancel appointments. Again, this is real reliability. Um, our clients are hiring us to count on us, to, to be accountable, to be reliable in their appointment. And if we're canceling, you know, once appointment a week, twice appointment, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hold you know, together. That's something that we really have to be mindful. I mean, um, things happen, emergency happens, and we all have to cancel an appointment, but try to avoid that, that situation. Try to plan your, your schedule accordingly so you don't have to. And then if you do have to cancel, our clients sign a 24-hour policy, cancellation policy. So if they call and cancel an appointment less than 24 hours, they are charged for that account, for that, that session. And I think that goes both ways. So if I have to cancel an appointment with my client with less than 24 hours, I will count them a session. It's only fair, right? It's a relationship. So you cancel on me, I'm going to charge you. If I cancel on you, you got a free session. Fair, fair. So we shake hands and we're good to go. Uh, but try not to do that. Okay? And um, huge pet peeve, pet peeve of mine is cell phone during a session. Our clients are not paying us to be on our cell phones, taking selfies or calling our wives or husbands or whatever. Um, it's their time. So put the cell phone down and, and pay attention to your client, to their form, uh, to what they're doing. If you can, of course, you can use your, your cell phone as a timer. Uh, I keep my clients' workouts on my cell phone. So I use that to remind me what they're doing, uh, but not to talk, you know, put it down and, and pay attention to it. I think this is all come down again to be professional. If you want to be respected to our clients, to our community, to our industry. So we have to you know, be professional. Um, because when you do that, your client's gonna love you. You know, you're gonna build up a relationship. Education, um, those are my peeps there. So let me show you this. Uh, this is me here. This is Dina Medina. Dina, that I think that was in a mastermind in California a couple of years ago. Dina is a presenter this year. She's talking about movement assessment for the other adult. Um, Ryan Glatt, that he's a presenter this year talking about brain health. Jay Croft, he's a presenter talking about Facebook communication. CJ, he's also a presenter. Uh, my buddy Matt, my girl Jackie. I don't know how those two guys on the corner are. They probably crush the, the party there. But um, but what I mean by that is that we we need we must stay current. We must stay um, educated through our career, right? So if you're just beginning, make sure that you get a good certification, uh, a good accredible certification to start with. If you're working with your older adult, it's imperative that you get functional aging certification uh, because it really teaches how to work with that population. Uh, but it's really about learning something new all the time to share with our clients. Because again, our clients will love that. We love the fact that you're taking time out to to have something new to show them, you know, so you so they can get better. So I think that every personal trainer one-on-one needs to know basic anatomy, 
We need to know basic physiology. We need to know basic kinesiology because those three things will help understand how the body moves. And then when we know how the body moves, we can help our clients how to move their bodies better. Right? So I think it's, uh, it's important. I think education really sets the tone of our career. It's not the most important thing, but it's a very important thing to, to stay current in our, and I think Functional Aging Institute, um, it's a great source to find those professionals. I mean, I just showed you in that picture, there is four or five presenters in the summit this year. Um, so, uh, and, and, and they're so willing to share their knowledge with us. I never met a group of people that, that were so open to, to share whatever, whatever they learn, whatever they, they can uh, to help us in the other side of the industry get better. So um, functional aging really come across with the cutting edge technology. So we personal trainers can do the best for our clients. Um, so yeah, surround yourself with the best professional in the industry. I think that's going to help us elevate our game. You know, the, the, the Functional Aging Institute really helped me look at myself, look at my business and really elevate the game in order to make my clients better. And, and it has been that way for the last three years. Uh, and don't be afraid to ask for help, right? So we never know everything. And, and when we don't know everything, we have this huge amount of team around us that we can pick up the phone or send a text. Hey, I don't know. I have a client that I start working that has got this or that. Um, do you know anything about it? I just just recently start training somebody that has dialysis, and um, and I had not trained anybody with dialysis ever before. So I jumped on a call with Cody and uh, got a few pointers, got a few um, understanding of that, and 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 he's doing great. So education is important too. And credibility, um, I think this is, I think all, we all want to build a reputation you know, behind our names and behind our business name. And I think that we all need to be recognized as industry leaders, as the authority uh, in, our, in our community for our clients. So I think it's important to, to, to become that, that person. I think that getting ourselves surrounded with, with great professionals, it's one way to do it, uh, but it's not all that we have to do or, or we can do. So in your neighborhood or in your, in your area, find a magazine that you can write an article about how to train the older adult or exercise for, for the older adult or however you want to talk, whatever your, your niche is or your knowledge is, but make a, make a, path, make a, a deal with a local <clears throat> newsletter. And um, so you can, you know, you put an ad there, you write an article, um, these people will, will see who you are, will see your mission, your purpose, and then you're going to start attracting that client. Um, you know, you have to make sure that you have a website. When you have, in your website, you have a blog or some form of um, articles that the clients, the prospect clients, can go to and uh, and see that you are, you, know, you talk about that, you write about that. Uh, this is your mission. I think it's important to start creating that all the opportunities, write a book, you know, like JR was talking about, you know, the book has been a game changer for me and for my business. You know, Functional Aging uh, Institute can help us, you know, write a book and get a huge amount of credibility when you do that. So instead of when you go to an event, when you go to a networking event or when a prospect client comes here, you know, when they leave, instead of just giving a brochure and a business card, say, hey, take my book talk about exercise for longevity and how can the exercise can help us you know, live better lives. So it is, it is important. So when you, when you add all that, you start becoming much more credible, much more reliable, much more professional. Uh, and, and then you know, the clients will start flocking to you. You're the person, you're the guy, you're the, the girl, you're the man to, to, to go when somebody has a hip replacement or a shoulder replacement or some kind of a kit, whatever it is, they know that they can go to you, right? And then you have to build that, that same credibility within, within the family, within your clients, right? And how do you build credibility with your client? I think it's, you have to explore commonalities with them. I find that our longest, best clients are kind of like us. 
So we like the same things. We go to the same places. We kind of watch the same, the same TV shows. And the way we do that is that we ask a lot of questions. Right? When we meet the client, when we train the client, we try to discover commonalities. What, what do I have in common with that client so we can click, we can relate. Again, one-on-one -on -one personal training, it's a relationship. You know, you're gonna be with that person for one hour, um, three times a week. Now, if you don't like that person to hang out three times a week for one hour, it's not going to last. So we need to, to find ways to connect to the client, ask questions, listen to what the client has to say, find commonalities. <clears throat> like I, I'm a broken man. I have four herniations on my lower back. I have a labor tear on my hip. I have a labor tear on my shoulder. I just have like this growing strain now out of nowhere. So when the clients come to me and say, hey, I have a back problem, you know what? I have back problems too. And I know how to fix you. I know what I did to, to, to help me so I can help you or, or a, a life with it, you know, loss of a pet or whatever it is, but find ways to click to your client. And, um, and sometimes it's the last thing that you expect um, that will make that, that connection, that click. And that again, that will increase our credibility with your relatability with our clients, right? Because I feel that way. I talked to you, I said that in the beginning. Um, our clients, our core clients, the ones that stay the longest with us have become personal friends. You know, we, we, we go out together on weekends. We travel together. Um, we hang out together, you know? And, and so when I come to work, I come hang out with my friends and I just happen to have... <clears throat> A little bit more knowledge when it comes to exercise and fitness to be able to help them, but but they're just like us. Right? Um, Dick and Sally, I know Dick and Sally again since two thousand. Um, just like Tim Singer, that gentleman in the beach, that was my very first client. Dick and Sally were also first clients when I moved here. Um, Fit Factor was not Fit Factor. Fit Factor was this little one side place called Body Horizons that I used to run a little loop here around town. And I would see it, you know, pop my head in it. There was never anybody there, but it was a little fitness studio. And I dropped my resume you know, back in, when I first moved here. And a couple, couple weeks later, um, the, the owner of this other place called me and he said, I'm going out of town and I have, you know, I saw your resume. I have a couple of clients that need to be taken care of while I'm away. Would you be able to do that? And that was how I met Dick and Sally. And I trained them for the time that the previous owner, Brian, was out and continue to train them till today. Um, they're awesome people. They're my dream threat retirees. They live part-time here in Fort Lauderdale. They have a home in Colorado. They ski, both of them, they're actually actively skiing. Um, they do bike trips. Um, active bike trips. So wherever they go somewhere, they will choose an active trip, a bike, a hike, you know, walk. Uh, that's them in China on the left there. And that's on the right on the party that we had here at Fit Factory with my partner, Mike and me. So um, again, they're, they're absolutely probably the, the fittest couple um, over seven that I've ever met. They can do anything. They can jump. They can um, change direction quickly, they, they're, they're awesome. This is some of the stuff that Sally does. It's all together. I should have separated the, the, the videos, but gives you an idea. Dick is awesome. Look at the form that he does here. He's squat, curl to press, look at squat here. It's a good form. So they're, they're very active. They're very um, supportive about exercising and, and and they understand the importance of it. All right, so this is what I think that you know our career should be uh, built upon. Um, we need to start with a personality, and in this industry, you know, one on one, if we don't have a good personality, you know, we're not going to be successful. We have to be people's person. You have to love working with people. You have to to accept their different personalities and be able to adjust and modify to each one of them. 
right? So if we work with five, six, seven clients in a day, eight clients in a day, sometimes three, four, five back to back, and they all have different personalities. You know, we have the fun one, we have the, the, the grumpy one, we have the energy sucker, we have the talker, and, and we have to be able to adjust to each one of them still be able to bring out the best of them. Uh, so I think personality is important. <clears throat> Again, personality and knowledge is just about saying, in my opinion, I have fired many great knowledgeable trainers because of lack of personality. So you gotta be a people's person. You gotta love to work with people on day in, day out, on a daily basis. Um, and you have to be passionate about working with, with the population that we work with. So it's not for everybody to be to be able to work with the older adult. Um, you have to have that passion. You have to be confident and comfortable working with them. Comfortable because you know it's it's they're different. You know? they, they have issues, they might have a problem or a limitation. And we have to be confident to make sure that we could pass that credibility to the client that hey, and I know what you're going through, uh, and, and I'm going to be able to help you. Or I don't know what you're going through because I've been, I have not been there, but I'm going to do my best to, 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 to gather the, the, the resource to, to train you at best, to do the best, the best we can. So passion is important to work with that clientele. And then find your tribe, right? Which, which niche, which slice of the older adult you're going to work with. Um, then, then it's really up to you to see what your knowledge is or what you feel more comfortable. If you're going to separate them by age, you now I'm only going to work with the, with the 50 to 60, or I'm only going to work with the people over 70. Um, I'm going to work with all the incomes. You know, we work with the affluent client here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, you, know, you can choose the fitness ability. You know, we work with the active, you know, older adults. So. I call all my clients, they're all healthy clients, just happen to have an injury or a limitation. So it's a healthy client that happened to be, to have cancer, breast cancer or whatever, uh, is a healthy client that has, that happened to have a hip replacement or a knee replacement or multiple sclerosis or whatever that might be. So choose your, 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 your people. Identify the problem that they have, that's the easy part. Because you, I, I can sit down with my client, with a prospect client, and say, <clears throat> well, I'm going to tell the problem. I'm going to tell you what the problem might be. We're all living longer. We're all going to live into our 70s or 80s and 90s. And, and, and the quality of life will depend on what I do now. And the problem is, if I'm not doing something right now in order to live better lives, better years, um, 10, 20, 30 years from now, this is a problem, you know, because the minute you know, we all need to do certain things, we all need to walk, climb stairs, drive cars, uh, sit and stand, squat up and down. So the minute that we, we lose any of those necessities, you know, the minute that somebody needs to help me come up of a chair, um, I lose my independence and that's a problem, right? So you kind of tell the client, the prospect, <clears throat> What the client might be, and you have the solution for it. You know, your program, your plan, your exercise can help them do all that, can help them do the things that they need to do a lot better and easier. So they're gonna sit down and stand up a lot easier. They're gonna push a cart in the grocery store a lot easier. They're gonna pull a carry on through the airport a lot easier. They're gonna carry groceries from the car and and then you tell her, hey, but then there are all the things that you like to do, right? You, you like to play tennis, you like to play golf, you like to play boating, gardening, playing with the grandkids. You know, my program will not only help with the things that you need to do, but are also going to help the things that you like to do. So you're going to play better tennis, you're going to hit the forehand a lot stronger, you're going to serve better. You know, you're going to play golf and you're going to drive that ball further. You're going to feel better playing, getting down on the floor to play with your grandkids. So you already have a, pro a product to, to eliminate the problem, right? Um, and, and then it's really our job to 
continue to wow our clients, continue to deliver that excellence in service, excellence in, in knowledge, excellence in care for your client. That's what's going to make them come back. Okay. And then the bonus one, the extra P there is for platform. So once we decide all that with your client, then you just have to choose whether you're going to change that, uh, uh, train, that train that person online, in person, uh, because that's, that's what the market did to us. You know, it allows us to train clients virtually. Um, so that gets to my next slide here, and, and just about quickly on the virtual training. Um, you really, the, the COVID-19, the pandemic changed the industry. I know there were some people already doing that prior to COVID, but with the COVID, I think everybody's doing now. And if you're not doing, you must do it because um, it is a game changer. It changed, it changed the way my business work. And the reason is, you know, Fort Lauderdale is a seasonal town. We have a lot of snowbirds that come from October to about now, June, and we have our season. And then June to October, you know, hurricane time and heat, and they all leave to their second homes. You know, in, in again, in our we work with the affluent client that have second homes in some place in the United States. <clears throat> and um, so in years prior to COVID, we would lose about 20, 30 percent of our revenues because of all these clients that will go away for the summer and either not work out or have a different plan to work out wherever they go. And a lot of the times they'll come back, you know, not trained for two, three months, and they would have to pick up and start all over again. And then, and then COVID really changed that. So last year, nobody traveled. You know, COVID hit in about March, February. We jumped on the, on the virtual training right then. And um, so we really, and because travel was restricted, so we really didn't have a dip in 2020, which really helped our business to stay above and, 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 and surviving. <clears throat> and then the clients understood that, hey, I can take you anywhere I go. So if I go to whatever, I, all I need is some bands, some dumbbells, and I can help you figure that all out. And, uh, and you'll never stop training. Um, and it changed not the way my business work because now we only see about five to 10% of a dip through the summer months, but he also provides better income for, for my trainers, right? For a better, uh, more stable, well, a year. So on the left there quickly, that's Jack Backmeyer. She's the owner of uh, Evolution Wellness and Fitness in Texas. She's a mastermind, uh, masterminder. And, uh, and that's her killing a workout outside of her garage. She's been a client since 2000. Um, super proud of her. Jerry um, <clears throat> has been a client since 2003. He's 68 and he's got a four-year-old daughter. So he's feeling right then how, how important it is to be able to, to stay fit, to keep up with his four-year-old daughter. And when he's in Florida, he comes here to the studio. He trained with us. He's got a home in Wyoming and then a boat that he travels the world with, and that's in Bahamas. And then Tony, Tony is my client since 1998. When I was living in Buenos Aires, um, Tony was my client, he, you know, he started training with me. He was on job assignment there. And then, then he retired, he moved to Fort Lauderdale, came here to studio for, for his training, and then moved to Providence a couple of years ago. And now I train him. From, from his home in Providence. So um, virtual training is here to stay. If you're not doing it, you better you know, start because you, you, you can broaden your clientele uh, a lot more. You can add a lot more clients to your, to your schedule if that's what you want. Your clients will like you too. So <clears throat> let's talk about our, our client profile. How, you know, what do they look like and, and why do they stay with us for a long time? Susan is the lady on the left, fierce. She is, like I said, she's the one on the beach there, the mother of three, and she's super fit. Uh, fancy, that's Lisa Rodriguez, also a client since 2000. She was one of the clients that the previous owner um, asked me to train when she was, when he was away for that week. Now she trains with Derek. But anyway, we, we work 
with baby boomers to Gen X. So our youngest client is 37 years old. That's Trisha, that, the picture on the beach. She's the breast cancer survivor. And our oldest client is Gilda. I also talk about the other with a, with a broken femur. And then we have everything in between. Um, I think that our bulk of our clients are about 55 to 65 years old. <clears throat> they do know the importance of the exercise. So we don't have to spend time trying to sell how important it is to exercise. When they come to us, they already know that. They already know that they need to exercise. They just need to find the right place for them to do it and the right program that they can stick to it. Um, and again, and, and, and from that point on, you require you know, the trainer to keep, keep that excellence, keep them coming back, keep providing that experience that they can't find anywhere else. Um, they have the money to spend. They can spend. The app one, uh, they not only have the money, um, but they'll also make the time to exercise. So they have the money, they have the time, they know the importance of exercise, um, and they need our help. These people have aches and pains, like I do. You know, they have, they have, you know, their back hurts. They're, they're, they might be going you know, into a surgery in a couple of months. They might be recovering from a surgery. So it, they really need more than ever the help of, of a professional who understand you know, their bodies, who understand the way their body works because they're knocking on the door and saying, I want to work out with you. I want to do something. I just need to find the right person. And when that connection is made, it's made for a long time. If you keep doing your job of providing that client with, with excellence, you know, and again, excellence might be in, in the type of program, in knowledge, in, in how you serve that client, how you um, treat that client, how you care for that client, then it's a it's a win-win situation. Unless you don't want a client for 20 years. But but that's that's important. So they really need our help. They need our help to keep up with their lives, you know, to keep up with their friends their golf games, their grandkids, um, now back with traveling. So they, they're looking for uh, the help that we need. And again, um, they will spend any money to make them feel, look, and move better. One or the other, or the three of those things. Right? So some people come here and just, they just want to feel better. You know, they don't care about it. Right now, I'm in so much pain, I just want to feel better. And we have other clients that you know, it's hard for me to move around. I want to move better in the, the tennis court. Or, or, you know, a combination of all those things. <clears throat> Our clients don't like big gyms. They don't like to go to big box health clubs, commercial gyms. They prefer the one-on-one -on -one type of environment, the smaller controlled environment. You know, I know all my clients by their names. I know all our clients, their history, their families, what they do, what they don't do, and, and they like that. You know, our type of baby boomer Gen X like that type of connection rather than just being the number. Um, they like to be pampered. You know, before I go there, you know, the, the then on top of that, the COVID hit and made these type of clients even more prone to not going back to that environment. So I would say prior to COVID, business like mine, smaller business like mine, we're having a hard time staying, staying above because there's so much competition. There's so many gyms opening up right and left, you know, here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and there would love to open up nice, you know, new, posh, brand new equipment. And my building is, you know, building I am is about 20 years old. The equipment that I have is about you know, 20 years old. Um, it was hard to compete, but my old equipment does exactly the same thing that the brand new does. And if I can show my client that <clears throat> my program doesn't rely on that and relies on, on, on the people that I have here working with us, uh, then I can provide a better service for them. And they like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. They enjoy being pampered. So they'll pay money to be pampered. And what I mean by that is that when I start my career back in that picture in the first slide there, you know, when I was working for the health club, 
uh, like I said, we would have to step up our game to make our clients, pam to pamper our clients. So at Fit Factor, our clients, you know, they come here and we'll provide for them. So we don't ask our clients, hey, go to the dumbbell rack and pick up a pair of 10 pounds and come back here and meet. We go there, we pick up a pair of 10 pounds, we clean the, pair, the, 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 the dumbbell, we give to the clients, when he's done with the exercise, we pick it up, we clean it again, we put it back. I'm gonna ask them to do a, an exercise with a band around the ankle. I get down on the floor, I say, put your hand on my shoulder here for balance. Let me put this on, you know, when you're done with exercise, I'll take it off and put it back. So that kind of a little things that we do for our clients, you know, um, makes them love us. You know, they, they, then then what, charge whatever you feel that is, that is necessary to provide the services that they want, you know, because they'll pay for it. They'll give you the money but they like to be pampered and they don't like to be rushed. They don't like to have an experience like come in, come out, next one, come in, come out, next one. They don't like that. You know, our personal training one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions are one hour and they love that. Um, they like the structure that we create with that hour, you know, a little bit of a warm up, and then we get into the dynamic warm up, and then we get into the program and then we do a stretch at the end. You know, and that's when I was, creating the presentation. I was asking my clients what they liked about us, what they liked about a program. And I was surprised to hear how many of them <clears throat> like the stretching at the end. So our one hour session always, always work with a five, 10 minute stretch that through the COVID, we will just put them on the floor and guide them through a series of stretches. But now that things are getting better, we're going back to stretching our clients on the floor. And it's a stretching. It's not. It's not science. You know, rock science. It's a simple stretching routine that makes your clients absolutely love it. And uh, and again, you know, it's just a way to finish the workout at a high note, right? So a lot of the times they they, they go, hey, I'm tired today. I'm just gonna do a quick workout. But can we do 20 minutes stretch at the end instead of 10 or 15? Sure, so they enjoy that. And again, it's not about fitness all the time. You know, sometimes a client will come here and the last thing they want to do is to exercise. There's something in their head, they're worried about something. You know, <clears throat> and it's our job to try to recognize that, keep them moving a little bit, but allow them to feel better. So if they need to talk or if they need to be quiet, whatever it is, but sometimes in that one day, it's not about fitness. I don't want to push my clients when I know that he's not mentally there. Okay. So, and again, and that hour session allows for connection, allows for spending time with them, asking questions, realize that whether they had a good night of sleep or not, that will tell how, how much you can push their client that specific day. You know, did they have a good meal or get a good breakfast or a good lunch or they haven't eaten all day? So that, that, that connection really makes a difference in, in building up a report and building up a relationship. Again, you gotta make your clients love you, you know, so they can come back. So quickly here, let's, uh, let me share how we make things happen here at Fit Factor. So around that picture there, that's one of my, my, my client, my uh, trainer, Cesar. And he's, um, he does team workouts uh, according with their favorite uh, football team. And that's about the fun, right? Uh, Todd, you know, he's been a client since his son was about three years old. He's at Brown University now. Bill and, 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 and his wife, Anne, they've been a client for about 12 years. Bill is my statistic. Through the whole pandemic time, he's the only one that got COVID, nobody else did. Um, this is an event that we did for the breast, um, for Susan Komen for breast cancer. Again, I don't know who that guy keeps crushing in the picture who he is, but another picture um, that we had at a party here. So, you know, we, we really maintain a family here. Um, we, we love each other. Our clients are, they know each other from, from outside of the gym. So when they get here, they kind of know each other. Uh, so we, we make it work like a family. So it starts, everything starts here with 
with my team. I have a really good um, group of people that, that makes magic work. Whether I'm here or not, uh, I, I, can, I can close my eyes and know that, that my trainers are knowledgeable, they're personable, uh, they know how to do the work, they know how to relate to clients, uh, and, and they're my family. Every, every one of my trainers, again, are my friend. And, and we hang out together, we do stuff together, I care for them. So they, they, I, I couldn't have done it without them, especially through the COVID uh, pandemic. They really stepped up and, and show that they're here for the long haul. So thank you everyone uh, from Fit Factor Team. And uh, our clients are awesome. So our clients have supported us through this whole time. We've been through a lot since 2001, since I opened the business and a lot of my clients have been um, with me for all this time. So we've gone through marriages and divorces and birth of kids and grandkids and graduations. Um, and, 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 that's, uh, and that made us closer together and, and, and build a stronger relationship with our clients. They believe in our mission. They believe in our, in our, in our purpose. And, uh, and they love coming here and working with us. So our clients make a big difference. Uh, my outside team, you know, people like Dan and, and Cody, people like the mastermind group. Um, these are, you know, these are the people that we can rely on it for any, anything we need. You know, if there's something that I don't know or something, you know, that's not, may not be technically related, you know, something about the business, uh, these people are there to help us. And, uh, Again, I could not have done it. I could not be where we are today in 2001, 2021, you know, feeling really good about the industry, feeling really good about where we are if we didn't have that support from, from my outside team. So uh, again, surrounding ourselves with good professionals is paying off. So I, I would suggest that you all do the same. Um, we are passionate about what we do. We are passionate about training the older adult. And, uh, and we present this message across the board. Our trainers, our team to start with, pushing on to our clients or so our clients believe in what we do. And then our outside team support what we do. I think that's important too. So we really want to provide our clients uh, with the best life they can until the day they die. Uh, we build relationships at Fit Factor, right? So, um, it's not always about the weight loss or the muscle gain. You know, it's about the experience that we can provide them on a daily basis. So if they come to Fit Factor and they feel good daily, you know, the three times the week that they come here, that's the highlight of the day, uh, then we're doing our job. And then of course, you know, they're, they're here to see results and we're here to feel better. And, you have to provide that, but it's not always all about that. Um, I do a one hour consultation with every prospect client. You know, it's one hour of my time, free of charge for the prospect, but I want to make sure in that hour that, that that client is the right fit, is the right fit for us, and we are the right fit for them. And I, I'm, I'm happy to give that hour to make sure that this is a good fit. So we'll sit down here. We chat for about 20, 30 minutes. I try to understand everything I can about that person. Um, and, then, and then we'll go through a little workout, a judgment-free workout, uh, where I'm just figuring out where they are so we can meet them at that point and start progressing. So I make sure that the client, the prospect client, will know that, hey, I'm not here to judge the things that you can or cannot do. I just see, want to see how you move. How you moving? Where are you moving? Are you strong? Are your weaknesses? In, and then we'll meet you there and go from that point on. That puts the, the client a lot more at ease to go through that program. Right? Um, and again, and, and from that point on, that first workout, that little 20, 30 minute assessment workout or however you're gonna call in your, your business has to be a pleasant experience. Right? They need to leave the studio because wow, you know, I can do this you know, and not wiped out because the trainer did too much. They wanted to show that, hey, it's not about that. So that first experience has to be a 
pleasant experience, you can always push it, you know, and always joke about that. I'm not going to be as nice next time you come, but, uh, but that first experience needs to be a pleasant experience. Um, our one-on-one hour uh, sessions are one hour, not 45 minutes, not 30 minutes. I want to make sure that our client, uh, we have enough time to spend with the client. And then we charge for it. It's, it's, it's not about the time. It's, it's, it's how you can provide within that time. Um, we offer a clean, I learned from that, um, Todd Durkin. I think you all know who Todd, Todd Durkin is. But he says that a, a fitness studio needs to be surgically clean. And we offer a surgically clean environment. Um, we have old equipment, but our equipment are, you know, our programs are made uh, based on science, based on, on engaging, you know, based on entertaining the client, you know, with, with that workout. Um, and, and they will log. And again, we finish our training sessions with a five to 10 minute stretch. So those are the things that the way we, we make the one-on-one -on -one personal training happen here. I don't know if I mentioned that, <clears throat> but we only do three things here at Fit Factory. We do one-on-one -on -one personal training, which is a core business. We do small group personal training, up to five people on the group, and semi-private, which is just two people doing personal training, not in a, in a group session. So those are the three things that do are the one-on-one -on -one has been always the core business and uh, small group, the second busiest, and then we have a people that does uh, semi-private. So getting to the end here, I just wanted to share the takeaways from this presentation. So I think the professionals and the personality, like we talked about, are just as important as your knowledge. And so um, the way you present yourself and the way you treat your client, um, it's more important than how much you know about training. Clients will care about those two things before they do. They care about how much you know. Uh, find the client that works best for you. Find the client that you're the most comfortable, most confident to be able to help. Because then you're going to love helping that client. You know, I love helping the clients that we have. I love helping the person that has a hip replacement or has a shoulder replacement or has a back problem. You know, it, it, it is. It's very easy to progress with those clients. And it's very easy to show uh, contentment in the phone because um, they, they are going to feel better right away when they start exercising. They're doing a program that is, that is science-based. So that the client face will change. One example about that, <clears throat> I trained this gentleman, he's a 76 year old man, start training January, 2021. Um, got a phone call from his son saying that he's a healthy guy but he was walking on the beach and had a, a heart a cardio episode had a little um, afib and had to be put a medicine and then had to put a couple of stints on his heart so when he started working here <clears throat> fit guy but very very afraid little confidence and you could see the way he moved what the things he would do that his confidence was not there but he was able to do the things and he started progressing he started coming and he started showing up and we start making you know better workouts and then one of the few last times that he was here he was on a rower and i sat down in front of him and i said yeah i'm very proud of you Bob. i mean I'm, you're it's a pleasant to to work with you because you you you, you show up you are engaged to the to the to the program you want to challenge yourself and, and the progress is remarkable. And he's in the rower and he put a smile from ear to ear. And he said, Paolo, this exercise thing is making me feel better mentally and physically. And I, I think I've been bit by the bug. So it was very nice to, to, to see that, you know, that expression on his face of, of how much the exercise can help them. And, uh, so find the client that you have fun working with. Um, virtual training, again, you got to start doing if you're not doing. And, uh, and if you need any help, do it. Reach out. I'll be happy to. I know there are more people that are much more knowledgeable about virtual training than I am. Uh, but I'll be happy to help you in any way I can.
you know, build relationships with your client. You know, that's how you're going to create longevity. Make your clients love you. you know, make make um, your clients feel that they cannot live without your exercise program twice, three times, four times a week. Well, thank you very much. That's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the presentation. I'd love to answer questions if you have it. Well, thank you for that, Paulo. That was amazing. And your heart and passion showed very clearly. And obviously you have gone above and beyond. So there were a few questions that came through. So I'd encourage anybody right now as we get into questions and answers to put those in the chat and we're gonna go through them. And I certainly have a few. Um, how exciting, you, you've obviously put a lot of your life's effort into doing this. And at the, the baseline of your key takeaways is professionalism. So you talked about the basics right there. And there's a difference when you're trying to be high ticket. From what I take, you're on a one-on-one, -on -one, high service, high ticket model that is designed to get results. So can you tell me, you know, how do you encourage people to be there, to be present? We have the world going around us. Are you telling people to keep their phones on the desk? Any other trainers? How do you really teach that foundational skill is be there, be present? Right. You're talking, you're asking about my trainers or my clients? Well, from a scale standpoint, both of you, you obviously get it. You've been running the business, but you also have a studio and other trainers. So for yourself, what tips and for your team, what kind of rules or boundaries do you put in place so that that professionalism that you carry carries throughout your organization? Right. So I think it starts from the beginning, right? So um, so all my, all my trainers, so I have four trainers here at the studio, including myself, you know, we're all 40 and up. So right off the bat, I think that we have a mentality that professionalism is important. Right? Nothing against young people, but there is a different in generations, uh, in generation there. Uh, the younger people like to be on their phone. Uh, so when I'm when I'm hiring, when I'm in the hiring process with with a trainer, <clears throat> I will go over you know our our list of things that is expected from the trainer, and uh, and those points in the beginning are are you know we discuss that. You know, I want you to show up looking professional, so I will provide you. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I will provide you with a fit factor shirt. So you can, you know, not one, but I will provide you five fit factor shirts. So you have, you know, you have a clean shirt to come to work every day. You know, I don't expect you to buy, I'll provide that to you. I also expect you to show up on time because if you don't show up on time, you know, that relationship will, will end. And like I talked, you know, like I said, me, I fired people that, that showed up late the first time, showed up late the second time. You know, didn't show up the fourth time. This is it. You know, we can we can we can continue a relationship. Um, and cell phone. I mean, it, it happens. Jr. It happens to 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 all of us. I think. You know, I think sometimes a look is is uh, is necessary when I see a trainer that is on the phone during a client. You know, I just give a little look. You know, sometimes a look is worth. A thousand words. Say, hey, put your phone down. Right, pay attention to your client. Uh, so I think all these things uh, start right off the bat from the beginning, right? And then, and then you know, reinforcement. We do weekly, not weekly, but monthly meetings with with our trainers that we go over. And uh, hey, don't don't forget, we have a few things, a few steps here. So if a client, if a trainer comes here first thing in the morning before anybody, he's or she is in charge of turning the studio on, turning the lights on, turning the AC on, you know, making sure the equipment is, is, is on, blinds um, are on, and etc. Right? If somebody's with the last one to leave, that trainer is supposed to close the studio down, you know, turn the lights off. You know. And if I come here the next morning and the studio is not like that, I know who did it because I can go to the schedule and say, hey, the last person last night was whatever. Hey, man, did you see the way you left the studio last night? Don't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, again, it's all, it's all relationship, JR. I think that, you know, I have a really good relationship with my trainers that, that um, it, it just becomes personal thing. They don't want to upset me because you would upset me if 
they would you know, they would do any of those things. And uh, and I don't want to be upset with them. And 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 I don't, and I'm not. So they, they again, they follow. They they we have the same mindset when it comes to to professionals and and provide that to to our clients. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, that's great. And why I wanted to go into that, even like you said, professional from the beginning, it's like I had this white t-shirt on as I was getting trying to get onto the Zoom and I couldn't get out of my own account to get onto here. So I, I meant to come prepared and in the last minute. So I paused the video so I could look professional. I on saw here. you change your outfit. Yes, you, you deserve it. it. You I deserve it. All the guests deserve it. And certainly FAI deserves it. So I apologize for that moment of professional lapse. You know, there is only me here, and I and I kind of put my belt on. I have shoes on. Nobody can see it, but in my mind, it's just, you know, it's a presentation. Like I could, I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself. I had, you know, shoes and and and, and shorts on today. I'll awesome. do that with my phone. So yeah, that's where I get is you you put expectations. Your people know you like them, and you're willing to have that conversation. And that's an important part of leadership to to scale beyond your one time because. There's a couple other questions here, and I and I did say I'd go with them in order, but I want to kind of stack your lessons and training here. So I apologize. Is essentially, you know, that next component is it. Why I wanted to go there is it can be difficult to scale one-on-one -on -one training just on your own. You're going to have a hard cap. And somebody mentioned, well, I might burn out if I'm doing X, Y, and Z. So it comes from that first question: How, when you're busy, you've got good marketing, you've got your avatar down that it's gonna be that other people. And it sounds like relationships, no different with your team members, like your patients, expectations from the beginning, they know this is a professional environment and you will have a lovingly kind conversation because you care about them, you treat your employees like family, that if something's off, they will come to you if they're showing up three or four times. So treat your employees, treat your patients from this one-on-one -on -one model like family and they will usually admit when they're falling out of out of um absolutely and it happened before again like i said i have i have an awesome team that i feel comfortable enough to come to them to talk about anything and uh, and I, I think they feel comfortable enough for whatever you know, whatever happens they can come to me and say hey this is what's going on you know i might not be on my on the top of my game you know in the last couple of days but this 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 and that so it is, it is, it is a relationship. It has to be a relationship because otherwise it, it won't last. One of the things that I ask you know, a, a, a trainer on an interview process is where do they see themselves in the next two to five years? And uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the personal training industry, the fitness industry um, can be a career, can be an industry that, that sometimes it's, it's a jump from one thing to another. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I really want to do is to sell real estate, but in the meantime, when I get my license or whatever it is, I'm gonna train some people. I look good. I've trained before. You know, I have a little bit of so you know. So they come here and you know ask so what what's your what's your goals? What's your expectations for the next three to five years? And I say, well, you know, in five years I hope to be selling real estate or I hope to be you know doing whatever it is that is not in the fitness related area then i know that is not a match then i know that's not a fit for this person <clears throat> very good so my, my, our trainers here you know, they take this seriously take this as as their career as their way to make their living and um and they you know and they're successful because they, they love what they do they're professional about their their, their industry they, they respect the industry I think that's important. Excellent. The next question is, and this kind of goes into, they would like to know how to package their prices, whether hourly or pay for a result. Um, maybe the difference between your one-on-one -on -one group models. I don't know that that sometimes is a personal question on the exact rates, but maybe more of the philosophy um, is each market and region's different. But I want to put one other question in there of about you and your success. And it goes back to you talked in, and presented a lot about your typical client. So that means you know their pain points, you know their challenges, 
you are speaking to somebody specifically to try to solve their problems as trying to market to everybody, which I would assume allows you to charge more for one-on-one -on -one rates than the corporate gym or anybody else. So how do we tie that specialized client that you're getting a specific result to, to how you packaged your programs to maybe, and maybe it is time for dollars, maybe it is just a higher ticket one-on-one. -on -one. How have you you've combined and had that trajectory over your time from when you were first starting to now based on you becoming an expert at getting a result for a very specific person? Right. Um, well, I think again, I think the one-on-one, the one-on-one industry already you know, asks for for more for an upcharge, right? So if you're going to charge, if you're going to work on the one-on-one, you know, you have to start with a current mark market price, right? And then and then experience and then credibility and then professionalism will all add up to that to that point, right? Um, and and I think. You know, I was talking to Dan Rich about this, you know, um, and, and, and here I am, you know, talking to a lot of people that I, I know are very, very knowledgeable about personal training in the industry, um, but it's not an overnight success, right? I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been in this for 30 years. I've been here in the United States for 20 years in this exactly same location. Um, so, so I kind of earned my, my title or the right to be able to charge more. But right off the bat, because we offer a service that not a lot of people do, you know, we not only work with a specific clientele, but we give this clientele the best services that it can get. You know, there might be another trainer in town that, that can work with, with the older adult and they can be, a, you know, just as good or better than we are. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that they're not going to get the same experience, right? And 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 I can only and that's why that importance of the, that our consultation that I can only show that person, you know, the type of services that they're going to get when they join the factor is when I have the opportunity to sit down with them for an hour, right? So then they can they, they can know a little bit of my personality. You now we can know right off the bat that that if that relationship is going to work. And I'll, you know, I'll present the prices right then. <clears throat> we do, we do packages of sessions for one-on-one. So we sell 10 or 20 packages, uh, 20 sessions of packages. So the client can buy 10 sessions, the client can buy 20 sessions. If they buy 20 sessions, they get a session free. So they get 21 sessions for the price of 20. And those sessions go into their account. We have a software that controls that. And, uh, and, and when that, you know, if they're working twice a week or three times a week, that will last for as long as that package. So if, if you're a 10 session package working twice a week, you know, you're going to get a five week program. Um, and then in our clients, you know, that's the beauty of it. They just renew it. It's, they don't ask for discounts. Can you get a discount on my next package? Can you hold? You know the payment until next week. There's none of that. There's none of that. It's renewal after renewal after renewal. So one session ends, they buy another one. The session, the package ends, they buy another one. The package ends, they buy another one. Is it set up that way, Paulo, from an automation? So meaning, is that like how your agreements start when tens open? It's automatically re-purchasing ten, or if you do ten sessions over five weeks, is it automatically renewing? on the fifth week so you have more of a, a predictable reoccurring income model so so i'll tell my clients that yeah there's no there's no contract on that so i'll tell my clients you know you're on 10 you no know, what's what how many sessions do you want to buy we have 10 or we have 20 and they say well we're going to buy 20 all right so at the end of 20 sessions which will be 21 we are going to renew your package you know at at the day of it um and, and if so, for whatever reason you decide not to, I can just refund that money back to you. So if for, you know, at the end you said, yeah, oh, I don't want to do it or I want to go, so whatever, then it's okay. I'll refund the money, you know, and, uh, and we'll part right there. But, but otherwise, you know, it's just, you know, I will have, it's not an automatic, I'll still have to do it. Um, my trainers, you know, it's mind body software. So, they have to check out the client 
um, in order for that session to be taken out of the client's account and in order for that trainer to be paid for that. So the clients need to be, the trainers need to be on top of their schedule, you know, and I have to go, you know, once a day, just make sure that all the clients have been checked out for that day. If any of those clients are in the end of their session, so I can go ahead and, and renew their, their package. Thank you. Uh, and, um, and, and just to, so in our, our small group program, those are monthly base. So the, the small group program that we run twice a week or three times a week, they are on the recurrent monthly automatic bill payment. And it's a lot less. Okay. So one-on-one, -on -one, the high ticket, you're doing packages of 10 or 20, the group models, the monthly reoccurring. Is there a discount price? Is there two monthly fees, whether they're going one time a week, two times a week, or three times a week? Does that determine their group price? Yeah. So we, we so I do the beach workout on Saturdays. You guys saw that picture there. Uh, for somebody that wants to do simply or only the beach workout, we charge $159 a month. Um, and then we have two workouts a week indoors at the studio, Mondays and Wednesdays at 5.30 in the afternoon, or Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 o'clock in the morning. So if somebody wants to do two a week indoor, that's $249 a month. So we have 159 for once a week, 249 for twice a week, and 359 for the three times a week, which would be the two indoors, Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, plus the beach workout. Cool. So, and then it comes down to a discount. So the, the three times a week, you know, if you cut down by, you know, like how much each workout would cost, you'd be less than the once a week. Very good. With that, um, how do you compensate your trainers? Is there a range in your area? Another question ask, is this a percentage of a session price, a set hourly? Are they full-time or paid per session? How have you operated inside your studio? So we, do, we do flat rate here at the studio for our trainers. <clears throat> and, um, and, 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 and when, when you start, when, you, when a trainer starts here, um, it depends on their qualifications and their education, and they start with a flat fee, um, with a flat rate. So no matter if they do one-on-one -on -one training, or if they're going to do a small group training, or if they're going to do semi-private training, you know that is a one fixed rate that we pay. And then as the trainer stays for longer with us and get more certification. So for example, when a client, when a trainer becomes FAI certified, um, then they increase the price and you know, they have a degree you know, that can go up. So uh, experience, duration, and... Um... Um, so yeah, it's time, time in the house and certification. Cool. So very good. The last question that one has been a couple years into the training industry and Maybe he's on the verge of threshold. There's a lot to running a business, training it, doing the marketing, learning. So how to avoid burnout potentially in a one-on-one -on -one model um, prior to getting some of those trainers. So tips for avoiding it. Does it get EV over time? Is it easier virtually than in person? So any burnout tips in this type of model of care, any tips you may have? You know, it's funny about the burnout. I don't know if any of you saw, I, I did a presentation, it was a pre-recorded presentation uh, at eight o'clock this morning. I was talking about how the COVID changed our, our industry, changed my business, you know, positively. And, uh, and I talked about burnout because prior to the, the COVID, um, I, was, I, was, I was getting the burnout. I was putting a lot of hours here because we were trying to focus on growing the small group training. So I was spending a lot of time uh, on, that, on that part of the business. Um, in, in, in my intern and me and my partner, Mike, you know, uh, we, were, we were focused on, on trying to get that. And we really, you know, it, it, was a hard, it was a hard process and we lost focus on the one-on-one -on -one training. And because of that, and this is all prior to COVID, I was, I was getting tired. I was getting tired of, 
of training clients and not seeing all the results that I wanted to, um, I think it all depends, JR or whoever asked, or asked that question. The, the part now depends on how much fun you're having in your business. Right? So when you're having a good time, you don't get burned out. You know, I'm having a wonderful time. I'm working a lot. My schedule is busiest that it's ever been. And I'm loving it <clears throat> because I see the results. You know, I see the results that is creating to my business. Um, you know, I see the growth that has occurred. I, had, I see the growth in, in, in my trainers. Um, so I, I'm, I'm so happy that I said, I don't want to stop that. You know, bring me more. Thank you, Paulo. I, I also have a partner, you know, Mike. He's, the, you know, he's got a financial background and, um, and management background. So you tell him that, that we're not going to see a client because I'm burned out and, and he'll pull his hair out. I'm like, no, you know, you can't, we can't lose clients. You can't I accidentally you know, he work that hard. Um, so we have time. I think, you know what? You got to put hours. I mean, you can't, you can't be successful you know, and, and, and work three hours a day because you four clients, you're burned out. No, I mean, if you're, if you're working 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, then I get it. But other than that, I'm sorry, no sympathy for me, you burn out. I love so, it. So, so but, but, but tips not to. I think you really, have, you really have to find good people to work with, you know, good clients and good team. Or a good environment. If you're working at a gym or whatever it is, you have to have a, 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 a good place. You have to like where you go to work. You have to like who you work with. You have to, otherwise, it's not going to work. Otherwise, you're going to get burned out. But it's not going to be a burned out when you're having fun. Thank you, my friend. That was amazing, Paulo. Appreciate everybody coming in here. If you heard it loud and clear, if it's not fun, you probably better run. You're not having fun. It's time to get aligned. And the second thing that he noted there, who are you surrounding yourself? Who's the team? If you're doing the things that isn't fun, somebody that's their favorite thing in the world to do that they would be having fun as well. So bring the team into the place where you don't enjoy it. And Paulo, it's very easy to see why you're incredibly successful. The passion, the heart, the kindness. Thank you all so much and uh, appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for getting, get, being such a great host, JR. Thank everybody for, for coming in, and I'll see you soon. Hey, Jay.